welcome back to the series on history of english literature in my last video i discussed in detail the historical and social and political background of the restoration period today i am going to discuss the restoration literature we begin with the restoration poetry that was mostly satirical realistic and written in the heroic couplet of which dryden was the supreme master he was the dominating figure of the restoration period and he made his mark in the fields of poetry drama and prose in the field of poetry he was in fact the only poet worth mentioning in his early youth he came under the influence of cowley and his early poetry has the characteristic conceits and exaggerations of the metaphysical school but in his later years he emancipated himself from the false taste and artificial style of the metaphysical writers and wrote in a clear and forceful style which laid the foundation of the classical school of poetry in england the poetry of dryden can be conveniently divided under three headings political satires doctrinal poems and the fables of his political satires absalom and ectophel and the medal are well known in absalom and ectophel which is one of the greatest political satires in the english language dryden defended the king against the earl of shaftesbury who is represented as ectophel it contains powerful character studies of shaftesbury and of the duke of buckingham who is represented as zirni the medal is an other satirical poem full of invective against shaftesbury and macflecknoy it also contains a scathing personal attack on thomas shadwell who was once a friend of dryden the true great doctrinal poems of dryden are religio laid and the hind and the panther these poems are neither religious nor devotional but theological and controversial the first was written when dryden was a protestant and it defends the anglican church the second written when dryden had become a catholic vehemently defends catholicism they therefore show dryden's power and skill of defending any position he took up and his mastery in presenting an argument in verse the fables which were written during the last years of dryden's life show no decrease in his poetic power written in the form of a narrative they entitle dryden to rank among the best storytellers in verse in england the palamon and ardid which is based on chaucer's knight's tale gives us an opportunity of comparing the method and art of a 14th century poet with one belonging to the 17th century of the many miscellaneous poems of dryden annus maribilis is a fine example of his sustained narrative power his alexander's feast is one of the best odes in the english language the poetry of dryden possesses all the characteristics of the restoration period and is therefore thoroughly representative of that age it does not have the poetic glow the spiritual fervor the moral loftiness and the philosophical depth which were sadly lacking in the restoration period but it has the formalism the intellectual precision the argumentative skill and realism which were the main characteristics of that age though dryden does not reach great poetic heights yet here and there he gives us passages of wonderful strength and eloquence his reputation lies in his being great as a satirist and reasoner in verse in fact in these two capacities he is still the greatest master in english literature dryden's greatest contribution to english poetry was his skillful use of the heroic couplet 
which became the accepted mayor of serious English poetry for many years. So this was precisely all about the restoration poetry. In 1642, the theatres were closed by the authority of the parliament which was dominated by the Puritans and so no good plays were written from 1642 till the restoration in 1660 when the theatres were reopened. The drama in England after 1660 called the Restoration Drama showed entirely new trends on account of the long break with the past. Moreover, it was greatly affected by the spirit of the new age which was deficient in a poetic feeling, imagination and emotional approach to life, but laid emphasis on prose as the medium of expression and intellectual, realistic and critical approach to life and its problems. As the common pupil still under the influence of Puritanism had no love for the theatres, the dramatist had to cater to the taste of the aristocratic class which was highly fashionable, fervorous, cynical and sophisticated. The result was that unlike the Elizabethan drama which had a mass appeal, had its roots in the life of the common pupil and could be legitimately called the national drama. The restoration drama had none of these characteristics. Its appeal was confined to the upper strata of society whose taste was aristocratic and among which the prevailing fashions and etiquettes were foreign and extravagant. As imagination and poetic feelings were regarded as vulgar enthusiasm by the dictators of the social life, but as actual life meant the life of the aristocratic class only, the plays of this period do not give us a picture of the whole nation. The most popular form of drama was the comedy of manners which portrayed the sophisticated life of the dominant class of society. Therefore, the basis of the restoration drama was very narrow. The most gifted among all the restoration dramatists was William Congreve, who was born in 1670 and died in 1720, who wrote all his best plays before he was 30 years of age. His well-known comedies are Love for Love, that was published in 1695 and the way of the world. It is mainly on account of his remarkable style that Congreve is put at the head of the restoration drama. No English dramatist has even written such a fine prose for the stage as Congreve did. He balances, polishes and sharpens his sentences until they shine like chiseled instrument for an electrical experiment through which passes the current in the shape of his wit. As the plays of Congreve reflect the fashions and foibles of the upper classes whose moral standards had become lax, they do not have a universal appeal, but as social documents their value is very great. Moreover, though these comedies were subjected to a very severe criticism by the romantics like Shelley and Lamb, they are now again in great demand and there is a revival of interest in restoration comedy. In tragedy, the restoration period specialized in heroic tragedy which dealt with themes of epic magnitude. The heroes and heroines possessed superhuman qualities the purpose of this tragedy was didactic to inculcate virtues in the shape of bravery and conjugal love. It was written in the heroic couplet in accordance with the heroic convention derived from France that heroic meter should be used in such plays. In it, declamation took the place of natural dialogue. Moreover, it was characterized by bombast, exaggeration and sensational effects wherever possible. As it was not based on the observations of life, 
there was no realistic characterization and it inevitably ended happily and virtue was always rewarded again the chief protagonist and writer of heroic tragedy was john dryden himself under his leadership the heroic tragedy dominated the stage from 1660 to 1678 His first experiment in this type of drama was his play Tyrannic Love and in the conquest of Granada he brought it to its culminating point but then he was severely condemned for his grand manner of writing tragedy by certain critics and playwrights it has its effect on dryden who in his next play aurangzeb exercised greater restraint and decorum and in the prologue to this play he admitted the superiority of shakespeare's method and his own weariness of using the heroic couplet which is unfit to describe human passion adequately so this was all about the restoration literature in my next video i shall talk about the age of alexander pope and also known as the age of reason till date stay connected to lutuf's literary club happy learning